Bueno, bienvenidos, bienvenidos a todos. Eh, bueno, vamos a hacer la sesión en inglés, creo, ¿Mm? eh, por si alguien se, se une después. Así que, good afternoon y and welcome to this last seminar of the SAIO um, this season. Ok, um, it's my pleasure today to introduce uh, our speaker, Dr. Fat Bumat. Um, bo, 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 oh, bo, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, the winner of the Fontella Prize in our last edition. Um, um, okay, just a, a brief introduction. Uh, Fad is assistant professor at the university, com, uh, Universidad Complutense de Madrid, at the Department of Econom uh, Economy Aplicada, uh, teaching international economics, um, development economics, European economics, etc. Uh, he has been postdoctoral researcher at the, at the UNAM. Um, and also during his doctoral studies, he did a research stay at the economics department of the Universidad Autónoma Metropolitana Azcapotzalco under the supervision of Dr. Sergio Cámara Izquierdo. Okay, his research uh, is focused on the analysis of the influence of competition and technological change asymmetries and imbalance from a, a global perspective. Um, uh, the research has been published in journals such as Structural Change and Economic Dynamics, uh, Applied Economic Letters, Economic Research, Revista de Economía Mundial, Investigación Económica, among others. So, it's our pleasure to have today a fact uh, with the um, presentation, do technical change and mechanization hard employment in the manufacturing sectors, an empirical assessment for the OECD countries. So, Fad, thank you very much. You know that uh, you have around 20, uh, 30 minutes for your presentation and the floor is yours. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much, uh, Rosa. Well, first of all, I would like to express my thanks for this invitation. It's a great pleasure for me. And also, I would like to say that I, I am a few sick and we know that winter is coming and then the virus are back, but I will try to do my best effort. Uh, and I hope that this um, season or this um, um, dissertation uh, will be interesting uh, for all the presents. Uh, well, um, about the outline, uh, when I was in Aveiro, I realized that if I follow the structure of the paper, it's probably that I will waste too much time. And then uh, I thought that uh, uh, to handle my, my time, I, I have to, to construct a, an outline uh, very brief, uh, very concise, uh, in order to, to communicate all the most important issues uh, related to, to my work. And then um, the starting point uh, consists of talking about uh, the motivation, the aim and the novelties of my research. Uh, in this sense, um, the motivation is very clear. Uh, we know that uh, the relationship between technological change, mechanization and employment is a very classical debate. And I want to contribute uh, theoretically and empirically uh, to this debate uh, that is very lively among uh, scholars currently. And then uh, I'm aimed to assess whether technological change and mechanization a uh, harmful manufacturing employment in the 38 OECD countries uh, over the period uh, 1998-2018. And I think that uh, the novelty of this work is twofold. Um, first, uh, probably is the first uh, attempt to measure technological change and mechanization by computing uh, the so-called vertical integrated labor productivity and the vertically integrated capital labor ratio. 
Uh, and also, uh, I think that is the uh, first attempt uh, to estimate the long uh, run dynamic effects of technological change and mechanization of manufacturing employment uh, by using the cross sectional autoregressive distributed lag uh, method and the cross-sectional -sec augmented distributed lag approach uh, by Tzadik and Pesaran and Tzadik et al. Well, uh, as I said before, uh, I would like to be concise uh, and then uh, my literature review will be very brief. Uh, and also we, we know uh, that uh, this topic is, is a part of a classical debate and then there are a lot of um, papers, research, books uh, that treat uh, this topic and then I cannot be uh, very comprehensive um, about the literature review because this literature review is very huge. And then I only highlight some important uh, works and I think that uh, the starting point uh, should be the work by Free and Hosborn, because uh, these authors claim that in the next um, two decades, the computerization, robotization, and mechanization will destroy around 42% of jobs in the United States. Um, however, um, Several researchers, several scholars uh, refuse uh, this pessimist view um, remarked by Free and Osborne and for instance, uh, Halfcraft and Taylor uh, say that uh, Frey and Osborne study is only an exercise of speculative statistical prediction because it uh, neglects uh, several variables such as um, technical and social labor division, the difference between skilled and skilled labor, uh, among others. Okay? And also, um, it's very, uh, very interesting um, uh, remark that uh, uh, Halfcraft and Taylor uh, disclose that there, there exist two prophecies in the literature about the relationship between technological change, mechanization and employment. And uh, we have uh, the utopian prophecy, uh, which claimed that um, mechanization uh, will release the humankind from the tyranny of work. Uh, for, for instance, we can read uh, Marx or Keynes and also Rodorsky, uh, who think that in the future, um, machinery uh, will create a society with enough time to, to dedicate to leisure. And also we have the dystopian prophecy, uh, which predict uh, that workers uh, are condemned uh, to a perpetual unemployment and uh, an increased social inequalities. Okay. Um, Nevertheless, uh, the empirical evidence seems to be mixed and then we cannot conclude what of uh, that prophecy is true, okay? And uh, then we, we cannot um, say whether uh, technological change and mechanization uh, really displays uh, human labor. Uh, for instance, Boyitiano et al. Um, state that investment in research and development may be labor friendly, although the effect is uh, much greater in those sectors which are intensive in innovation than in those sectors we are not uh, intensive in innovation. Okay, so I think this is a tautological uh, conclusion, but uh, is related to the um, relationship between unskilled and skilled labor. On the other hand, as Amoglu and Restrepo um, discompose the effect of innovation into productive effect and displacement effect. Uh, then if the productive effect is greater than the displacement effect, all the innovation are labor friendly. 
And conversely, if uh, the displacement effect is greater than productive effect, then uh, the innovation uh, can hurt uh, the employment in any sector. Okay. Uh, also, as a Moglu and Restrepo um, find that the effect of robotization in the United States may be negative, although their results are not conclusive because um, the size of the coefficient is not very huge, and then uh, we cannot conclude that robotization will be always negative for workers. Uh, does he at all um, recover the, the work of Boyetiano at all and find that uh, labor friendly effect of the investment in research and development is minimal? And also, the so called compensation mechanism uh, posted by 19th century economists don't hold uh, because uh, the creation of um, or the increase in demand of uh, skilled labor cannot compensate the destruction of jobs for those uh, unskilled workers. Um, finally, Kurtz and Pretner um, claim that uh, technological change and mechanization uh, increase the demand for skilled labor and displace uh, those unskilled workers. Well, uh, once we, once I have uh, uh, talk, um, talking about uh, the, the literature review, we move to the theoretical framework. Well, uh, as I said before, uh, this topic is a classical debate, and um, obviously we must uh, start by uh, talking about uh, David Ricardo, who re revises his prior belief that technological change and the introduction of machinery benefit all social classes to the same degree. We know that the third um, edition of his masterpiece, uh, The Principle of Political Economy, include a new chapter in Tilted on the Machinery. Uh, in this uh, chapter, Ricardo says that substitution of machinery for human labor may be harmful uh, to workers because uh, create a redundant population. Uh, this redundant population is um, acts like a excess of labor power supply that maintain the wages on, on below the, the maximum rate of uh, profi profitability. Um, <clears throat> this um, um, regarding the standpoint uh, was taken up by Marx uh, to enunciate the general law of capitalist accumulation. And for Marx, the accelerated capital accumulation and centralization leads toward strong changes in the capital labor ratio. Then, uh, when the capital ratio increase uh, a relatively redundant working population arise and then this redundant working population is a pro is a necessary product of uh, capital accumulation uh, why because uh, the technological innovation and mechanization tend to attract and reduce labors and then create an unlimited uh, labor power supply that maintain the real wage rate below the maximum rate of profit. Uh, this maximum rate of profit is the upper limit for, for the firms. And finally, uh, Mars conclude that the redundant population is unnecessary to assure capital accumulation process in the long run. Uh, it should be highlighted that uh, both uh, Ricardo Marx uh, model is very similar to von Neumann model and also uh, Arthur Lewis model, uh, which is very popular in development economics. And uh, we know that in those uh, countries, in those de uh, developing countries, 
um, is usual that uh, exists an excess of labor uh, supply. Well, um, on the other hand, uh, if, if, if we go to the most recent uh, literature, uh, we can find uh, Goldin and Katz's uh, contribution, and this author disclosed that technical progress spurred the demand for skilled labor power uh, over the last 70 decades. Uh, what does it mean? It means that technologies developed during, during the 20th century are technologies skilled complementaries. Then, uh, when uh, innovation appears, this innovation are positive for those uh, workers whose skills are um, better than the average. Okay, and also as a moglu um, says that a greater supply of skilled labor power stimulates the rise of those technologies skill complementaries. Finally. Uh, we must uh, remark uh, the contribution of Stiglitz, who say that the rigidities in the labor market uh, for Stiglitz, these rigidities stem from uh, the so-called uh, waste, uh, efficient waste, uh, and then this is not allow the rise in the demand for skilled labor power to compensate for the decline in the demand for unskilled labor power. In other words, um, although the innovation uh, increased the demand for skilled labor power, this increase in demand of skilled labor power cannot compensate uh, the destruction of employment or the demand for unskilled labor power. And then uh, the, mm, the redundant population uh, is maintained along the, the time. Well, now we move to, to data methods. Uh, as before, I will be very brief. I only highlight the, the most important issues. And uh, of course, I have to talk about uh, the uh, database. In, in this case, I have used uh, the statistical information uh, which is contained in the OECD statistic and concretely two, two um, data. Uh, the first of them is the national input output tables, concretely the 2021 edition. And also, I have used the database for structural, structural analysis. And from uh, this uh, statistical database, uh, I could um, uh, get, get the information about uh, 18 manufacturing sectors classified in concordance with the ISIC uh, version 4. And from the database for structural analysis, I uh, did, uh, I, um, I gathered uh, those information about the numbers of employees, the numbers of, uh, of our work by employees, labor compensation for each sector that I have included in my, in my sample. It's very important to remark that all data I measure it in United States dollars, and then I can maintain the statistical consistency. And the method that I apply it is a panel data consideration analysis because this uh, method uh, has numerous advantages over uh, other uh, methods like time series and cross-sectional data. Uh, Sayo uh, summarized very well all these advantages, and then I have <laughs> not enough time to, to remark any advantages of uh, panel data over time series and cross-sectional data. Well, uh, 
I said before that uh, one of the novelties of this uh, work consists in, in use vertically integrated labor productivity and vertically integrated capital labor ratio uh, as measures of technological progress and mechanization. Uh, and then we must uh, talk about uh, how we computed uh, this uh, index uh, or this uh, variable. Well, uh, in the case of vertical integrated labor productivity, uh, I use the notion of uh, vertical integrated sector by Pacinetti, and then uh, I have calculated the so-called uh, vertical integrated labor co coefficients. Um, this uh, um, uh, uh, this method is very, very easy to 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 comprehend and only I have to obtain a row vector of direct uh, uh, labor coefficient and then I multiply this vector by the Leontief matrix and uh, finally I, I get a row vector of the vertically integrated labor coefficient. Once I have the vertically integrated labor coefficient, I only have to invert it uh, to reach the labor productivity, the vertically integrated labor productivity. OK, so what is or why it's important to use the vertically integrated labor productivity? Well, some important points uh, related to this variable are remark uh, remarked by the Juan and Febrero. First, the vertical integrated labor productivity captures both direct and indirect labor productivity, and then considers all those inputs involved in the process of commodity production or goods production. Uh, second, both fixed capital and intermediate inputs are integrated as indirect labor, and then uh, we can uh, assume that human labor is the only factor implicated in the production of uh, in the production process of commodities. Uh, third, uh, the vertical integrated labor productivity takes into account both the structural relationship among sector and productivity transfers from innovate sector to those industry which need both directly and indirectly the inputs. And finally, it's a pure technological index. And then uh, it's not affected by changes in distribution, output composition, and other factors which are not linked to technological progress. In sum, I think that uh, there are a lot of advantages uh, in the use of uh, vertical integrated labor productivity as a measure of uh, technological uh, change. Um, also, to calculate the vertical integrated capital labor ratio, we only need a diagonal matrix of direct capital labor ratios, and then this uh, diagonal matrix should be multiplied by the Leontief inverse. Uh, when we have uh, the vertical integrated capital labor ratio, uh, we can uh, say that uh, we are capturing uh, both direct and indirect amount of capital employment to every unit of labor employment. And then uh, it's feasible to analyze the effect of a general mechanization process on manufacturing employment. Um, well, also, it's important to, to remark that um, when we are using econometrics, it's very important to control some effect uh, derived from other uh, variables that we are not uh, the interest variable, but can um, distort our results. Uh, in this case, we know that bargaining power of workers, uh, the industrial business cycle, and also the global value chains affects the employment. And then we have to control uh, the uh, their effects by including some proxies. 
uh, which are these proxies? Well, we have the real wages as the proxy of bargaining power of workers. We use gross value added at constant prices as a proxy uh, to capture the industrial business cycle. And finally, we have used the domestic employment in Boybetting for in final demand um, to proxy the global value exchange effect on manufacturing employment. And then our multiply line and regression estimated by ordinary least square can be denoted as follow. So it's a linear uh, relationship. But uh, it's important to, to, to remark that we have uh, mentioned that it's very important to distinguish the skilled and the skilled uh, labor. However, um, because the database uh, does not distinguish the skilled and our skilled worker, we have this composite, our sample, uh, uh, by following the OECD sectoral classification based on the technological intensity. Uh, for instance, uh, those high and medium high tech intensity manufacturing sector are considered as those sectors that employ skilled workers. Second, those medium tech intensity manufacturing sectors uh, are those sectors that demand for medium skilled labor power. And finally, medium low and low tech intensity manufacturing sector are those whose employees are less skilled workers. Then all the data has been organized into four balanced panels. The first of them include all manufacturing sectors. Uh, the second of them include only the high and medium high tech intensity manufacturing sector. The third uh, balanced panel uh, comprises the medium tech intensity manufacturing sector. And finally, or the last uh, balanced panel is uh, formed by the medium, low, and low tech intensity manufacturing sectors. Well, uh, previous to, to talk about the, the mean result, it's, it's important to, to um, conduct a preliminary analysis in order to um, assure that our, our model is uh, well. Um, how to say in English, well, um, uh, well designed. And uh, the first step implies the multicollinearity. Uh, by using the beef test, uh, we can uh, say that our explanatory variables are not correlated, and then the multicollinearity problem uh, does not arise in our data. The second step implies the cross-sectional dependence. We know that uh, the panel data has the problem of cross-sectional dependence, and then we must test the null hypothesis of cross-sectional independence. Uh, by using the cross-dependence PSR and 10, uh, we must reject the null hypothesis, and then we have assumed that our data uh, are suffering the so-called cross-sectional dependence problem. Uh, given that the cross-sectional dependence uh, tend to be uh, correlated to the slope heterogeneity, we, we must also uh, test uh, the null hypothesis of slope homogeneity and uh, according to Pesar and Yamagata, and Blomwitz and Western test, we must uh, reset this null hypothesis and then our data uh, are suffering the, the problem of slope heterogeneity. Finally, uh, we, we test the, whether the variable are non-stationary 
and uh, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of uh, unit truth, and then we have assumed that all our variables uh, are non-stationary and integrated of order uh, one. Uh, in this case, we have used the SIP and CAF test by Pesaran because it's the second generation of panel unit root test, and in the presence of the cross-sectional dependence, only these tests are um, feasible to, uh, to reach uh, uh, good information about the stationary hypothesis. Well, uh, we know that when we have a set of non-stationary variables, uh, this variable, in order to be economically meaningful, should be co-integrated. And then we, we have used the two uh, tests, two tests uh, for co-integration, and this test can control the problem of cross-sectional dependence. And this test uh, has been um, developed by Westerlund. The first of them is the Westerlund panel co-integration, uh, which uh, disclose that we must uh, reject the null hypothesis of no co-integration, and then we can assume that our variables are co-integrated. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the error correction model co-integration test is more pow powerful than the West Western Room panel co-integration, and then, uh, according to the literature, is uh, beta uh, tool to test uh, whether the variables are co-integrated in the long run. And in this case, uh, once again, we, we find that uh, we can reject the null hypothesis of no co-integration, and then we can conclude that uh, all the variables um, share, uh, long, um, share a common trend, in the long run, because uh, they are co-integrated at the same grade. Well, now we move to the mean results. This is the last part of uh, my dissertation, and I, I insist I, I would like to be concise. Uh, there are a lot of issues in my paper. I, I cannot um, take time for any any of them, but uh, we can summarize our results by starting to, to say that uh, the short and the long run equation of the variable were estimated by employ employing techniques that control both cross-sectional dependence and slope heterogeneity. Uh, we we have used the cross-sectional ARDL by Chadi Campesara because uh, this estimator has some advantage over other methods that also control for cross-sectional cross dependence and slope heterogeneity. Um, because I have no enough time, I, I can uh, talk about this advantage, but in Chadi Campesara, uh, are well summarized, and uh, we, we can, uh, if anyone uh, wants to, to know what are, which are these uh, advances, can read Sadi Campesaran paper. Well, um, according to our research for the panel of all manufacturing sector, uh, we find that both vertical integrated labor productivity and vertical integrated capital labor ratio are statistically significant and their coefficients are negative, both in the short and long run. And then uh, probably uh, the technological change and the mechanization uh, reduce the demand for uh, labor power in the long, uh, both in the short and the long run. However, if we only analyze the results for the high and medium high tech intensity manufacturing sector, we find that the increase in the vertical integrated labor productivity improve manufacturing employment uh, for those skilled labor 
workers, and then we can uh, say that technological change is a skilled labor friendly, and this result is very similar uh, to other uh, researches, uh, for instance, Bogiziano et al., uh, who find that the increase in investment of research and development improve employment in those sectors which are uh, intensive in innovations. But uh, if we apply, if we an, an, uh, if we in interpret the, the results for, for the panel of uh, high and medium high uh, tech intensity manufacturing sector, we find that the increase in the vertical integrated capital labor ratio uh, <clears throat> may hurt the manufacturing employment. And then even skilled labor could be substituted by machinery in the short run and the long run. This result is quite different uh, to other researches. Mm, of course, it's not conclusive, but uh, we, we, we reach a result that um, refuse the idea that mechanization is skilled labor friendly and then maybe uh, we need a further in, uh, investigation to confirm this tendency. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the results indicate that the reduction in, in the employment in the medium tech intensity and the medium low and low tech intensity manufacturing sector is larger than the positive effect of technological progress reported for high and medium high tech intensity manufacturing sector. What does it mean? Uh, it means that there are not a compensation mechanism. And then those um, skilled uh, labor, uh, so this, uh, the, the increase in the demand for skilled labor uh, is not suffice to compensate the destruction uh, of jobs for the unskilled uh, labors and then we, we can conclude that the co uh, compensation mechanism uh, does not hold uh, in in our uh, results well uh, we now use as a robustness check uh, this uh, cross-sectional dl uh, approach uh, because uh, Although it's mm, superior uh, in to, to C, CS RDL, uh, as uh, Chadika and Pesaran says, uh, we, we don't use this estimator uh, for contravening the results um, obtained uh, with uh, the CS RDL estimator, but uh, is a valuable complementary. And uh, we, we can say that the result by using the C CSDL uh, approach are uh, very similar to those found uh, by the CSRDL. And then uh, we can conclude that the empirical evidence appears to be supportive of the, of the theoretical mechanisms uh, on which this research rests, that is, uh, we, we have pos um, posit that uh, technological change and mechanization create a redundant uh, population in order to assure the capital accumulation in the long run. Well, now we, uh, our last step uh, imply uh, to talk about the concluding remarks. Uh, I think that the chief conclusions that can be inferred uh, from my research is that uh, technological change and mechanization contribute to maintaining a redundant worker population to assure capital accumulation in the long run. Also, this long-term trend should not be interpreted as the end of human labor, 
uh, because uh, any econometrical study is not conclusive and only give us some information that uh, can be useful to um, reach uh, a conclusion, but uh, is not, um, as I said, uh, conclusive. Be, uh, moreover, the values coefficient reported by both estimators are relatively small, and also, I, I must remark that my empirical assays uh, adopt a supply side approach and then uh, has neglected the importance of the extent of the market, the demand for those final goods processed by manufacturing sectors included in, this, in the sample or the process of product innovation. In other words, further research is needed by including demand variable to evaluate more accurately the influence of technological progress and mechanization on employment. Finally, if policymakers are looking for improving employment in the OECD country, they should line in the potential negative effects of technological progress and mechanization by developing and applying measured focuses on first increasing research and development expenditure to support product innovation, second enlarging market by growing national income, and finally enhancing worker skill by means of training and education spending. Uh, that's all. Thank you for <laughs> Attention and any question, any comment is welcome. Okay, thank you very much, Fat. Thank you very much for your presentation. You. Okay, um, we have some minutes for questions, comments, around 10 minutes, so the floor is yours. <laughs> Maybe in my case, Fat, I can open the, the floor for the questions. <laughs> I only have one simple question. Are you using the intercountry input output tables from the OECD in a multi regional framework or are you using national tables? National, national, only national. Only national. Okay, and why don't you use a multi regional input output database for do the same? And maybe why don't you use another database like uh, Wyatt, for instance, that, um, because you have you are going to have uh, um, labor accounts differentiating between uh, skilled labor, for instance. I think it's a yeah. good opportunity for you to do the same, but with these uh, uh, frameworks. Uh, have you think about that or is there any special uh, thing? Well, so Thank I you. think that uh, I can't remember well, but I think that the Wyatt only cover uh, uh, a very tiny period, no? From yeah. uh, 2000 to 2014, no? 14 or 16. I'm not sure if you will find this uh, this labor account until 2016. But in your case, it's 2018, the last one? Yes, it's, uh, it's from 1998 to uh -huh. uh, 2018. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the multi regional framework with another database, more actual database, no, for instance, the OECD tables uh, comes until 2018, I think, is the last one published. Uh, from Wyatt? Or? No, no, no. Oh, uh, inter country input output tables from OECD. Ah, from the OECD? Yeah, yeah. Well, so in fact, uh, I, I didn't uh, measure the. Um, so the interregional effects. So I only want to to measure the the effect on sectoral on manufacturing employment mm -hmm. by using the vertically integrated uh, labor productivity. And then I, I thought that all, with only using the national input output, I can uh, compute uh, this variable. But uh, in fact, so uh, I didn't think that uh, we can use the interregional effects uh, by using the inter interregional input output tables. But um, I think in a few other research, I can use it and improving the, the results. Okay, thank you. Okay. Esteban, raise her hand, his hand. <laughs> yes, thank you. I just 
put it out uh, again. Um, oh, well, uh, let me start by, by congratulating Faba uh, for, for his presentation. I think it's it's a really interesting uh, work. Uh, I mean, very it is very connected with, with uh, economic reality. And I think this is what we demand with the input of the studies. And then you connect it with econometric analysis. So, so in this sense, I'm, I'm very positive about that. Actually, my, my questions are, are really similar. And I have these two points marked here. Um, uh, I mean, they are connected with uh, Jorge's um, um, remarks about the database. So I, I was a bit surprised of the choice of the, of the specific database because if I think on the effect of, let's say, mechanization or, 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 or more specifically, robotization of, of activity, what I have in mind is not necessarily this um, purely sectorial or industry-based approach, but this is something, in my view, is more related to occupations. So it could perfectly be, uh, it could perfectly happen that in one particular industry, which is, let's say, heavily affected by, by this mechanization process, it is only one particular type of, of, of jobs, which are, let's say, potentially in danger, while other, let's say, less routine uh, tasks within this industry are not so, so affected by that. So uh, my, my, my question was, why not use wire? And in particular, why not use wire on this, uh, this uh, multi-regional approach? So, but, but you already respond to that, so don't, don't, don't waste your time. Uh, but partially connected with that, there is a relatively recent paper by um, uh, Gats and Debris and Sebastian Minudot and other, a couple of colleagues in, I think it's 2020 in labor economics, which they basically aim at doing the same as you do. Uh, but well, they use wired data and they propose a very specific index for the robotization of the of the job. So how how is the I don't know how to call it. I don't remember the details of the paper, but they they try to quantify the the degree of exposure of exposure of, of some particular type of jobs by industry and by country to this let's say potential threat of of robotization. So and I was wondering if you could make a comparison of this type of indicator um, with your, uh, let's say, proxy for that, which if I understood correctly, you try to capture this uh, by using this capital labor radio, or vertically uh, integrated and everything. Or, or conversely, pe perhaps you could, uh, because the data that, that they are using, the, the index that they are producing in, in, their, in their papers, uh, I think they are freely available, so you can, you can take it uh, and you can use it. Um, try to integrate this in your in your um, econometric analysis just to check if your results are more or less robust to that. Apart from that, um, uh, congratulations uh, again from uh, for your uh, presentations. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, no, thank you very much for for your comments. Uh, in fact, uh, the the um, it's very important to 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 have index of robotization. Uh, I don't have the a good index for robotization, but I know that uh, some scholars from Spain uh, have measured the effect of robotization on employment. I think uh, the paper is published in Structural Change and Economic Dynamics. Uh, it's, uh, I can't re remember the name. Uh, but uh, in further research, uh, I would like to include uh, robotization, computerization. I, I only I want to, to include the services sectors because the services sectors uh, also are affected by uh, technological change. And I think this study is only a first attempt. <laughs> uh, I don't think it is, uh, is the, um, how to say, is the, um, uh, the last one, no, it's not the last one, but only is the first of uh, uh, others um, investigation about uh, how innovation, how robotization, computerization can affect uh, the employment, and uh, if uh, really that always is negative or sometimes is positive. <clears throat> but uh, I know the limitation of my work. I think that I have to improve some index and also uh, to compare my, my result with other <clears throat> investigation uh, which have used uh, 
others index uh, to, to measure the robotization. But uh, I think that, uh, yes, it's a, it's a good uh, uh, comment of, uh, of, uh, from you. And, and then I, I will mind <laughs> in the future. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Yolanda also? Yeah. I think. Okay. But uh, uh, I think it's really interesting and that you actually have replied my question <laughs> in the last uh, answer now, because uh, it's also related with the Esteban one and with this idea of not including services. But for I, I know you are focusing on the uh, manufacturing, but the thing is you have a long period and I mean, for my point of view, there is two processes that have been produced at the same time and that they are related. One is this technological change, and other is that the manufacturing have been externalized services. So in that sense, it can be that uh, part of the employment effect that you are funding is not directly affected by the technological change, but because the industry have been exporting these sectors, these externalizing these mm. services. So in yeah. this sense, maybe the idea of uh, analyzing the services as well can help you to understand and try to see if you are able also to disentangle this kind of effects. Although, of course, it's quite difficult because they are quite related at the very end. Because someone has to also produce this technology, so research and RD are in, in other part, let's say. So as I said, uh, Thank you very much. It has been really interesting for me. Uh, yes, I know. Thank you very much. I know that um, there's services and um, um, how to say outsourcing, offshoring, uh, impact on, on, on employment. So uh, as I said before, this is <laughs> the, the first attempt only. <laughs> and then I, it was a um, idea that I had during th this summer and then I, I thought that uh, what can happen if uh, use vertical integrated productivity, productivity and vertical integrated capital ratio uh, by combining uh, econometric method. But I know that we, we, we must uh, include uh, more, more variable, more more issues, for example, services. Uh, I think that services maybe is the, the most important, uh, um, how to say, the most important um, area that we can see how uh, technological innovations plus uh, global value chains can affect negatively on employment, uh, at least in the OECD countries. Maybe in other countries is, uh, is beneficial. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, we, we can um, extend the, the research uh, by including uh, more, more variables, more, more perspective to 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 analyze, analyze the, the 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 nexus between technological change mechanization robotization uh, employment of soaring uh, so on thank you I don't know mm. <laughs> if I... okay thank you any other question any comment no no other hands, no. Okay, so we are on time. We can finish here. Fat, thank you very much for thank your you willingness to be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can finish and and just to uh, to announce that uh, we have already published the web page with the information on the next workshop of the SAYO that, if you remember, will be in Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. And in the coming days, uh, all the um, all the SAYO members will receive uh, an email with some information. Okay. It's 
this one, <laughs> and you will receive an information, an email with information about the the key dates and and the characteristics of this um, workshop. So uh, from my side, only to to say that I wish you a, a, a nice Christmas holidays and, and that in the next year we will come back with new ideas and with new webinars, etc. So thank you very much. Thank you, Fat. Thank you, Fat. Thank you, Fat. También español, muchas gracias. 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 Gracias.